Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel, please subscribe. The mysterious grave shared by three Tudor queens of England. Inside the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula, over 1,000 remains of many of the most famous executed Tudor figures remain interred there. The chapel is found inside the Tower of London, which became a very brutal place during the reign of King Henry VIII, with two of his wives being beheaded in horrifying scenes. The story of Anne Boleyn and Catherine Howard's death captivates the world 500 years on from the harrowing site, but today the pair are interred within the same grave and burial site. But they are also buried with one more Tudor queen, who was also beheaded, but on the orders of Bloody Mary I. Lady Jane Grey is remembered as the Nine Day Queen, who was killed despite only being a young lady. But today all three of these queens lie in the same place below the high altar, inside of the chapel, and they lay there very close to each other. Now, when Anne Boleyn was executed inside the Tower of London on the 19th of May 1536, there was no arrangement for her burial. As she had died a traitor, there was no state funeral or anything, and Henry VIII had chosen to ignore Anne's death as he had moved on to his soon-to-be third wife. When the French swordsman struck his executioner's sword clean into Anne's neck, her neck was taken clean off in one strike, and there was very little thought given to the burial of Anne. Her ladies who remained with her in the tower brought to the scaffold an elm trunk which was used to store arrows and bows, and this was then used as a coffin for Henry VIII's second wife. The ladies were described as half dead when they collected Anne's body. They wrapped it in a cloth before putting it in the chest and carrying it into the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula. Anne is said to have been buried inside of a shallow grave in front of the high altar, next to her brother's remains, but later on, as the centuries passed, they would be interred and exhumed. Catherine Howard was the ill-fated fifth wife of Henry VIII, who found herself also accused of adultery and treason. Catherine was possibly just a teenager when she incurred the king's brutal wrath, and she had been accused of sleeping with the king's best friend and another man behind Henry's back. But she too would be executed, as the young girl was brought out to Tower Green and on the scaffold she had her head struck clean off by an axe. Catherine was not allowed a swordsman to take her life, which was seen as the ultimate disgrace, but following her death, we don't entirely know too much about what occurred and how her remains were treated. The man who was responsible for her burial was the constable of the tower, and it's believed that Catherine Howard's remains were placed in the same place as Anne Boleyn's, but speculation does exist about Catherine's remains. It's believed that Henry VIII ordered Catherine's body to be covered in quicklime to literally wipe her off the face of the earth and erase her from history. Our third queen is Lady Jane Grey, and she was also executed there inside Tower of London, on the scaffold. Jane was the nine-day queen who had been the successor to Henry VIII's son, Edward VI. Jane, a Protestant, was sworn allegiances to by the Privy Council initially, but they did withdraw their support when Mary I rebelled. Mary, also known as Bloody Mary, did overthrow Jane and was proclaimed the rightful Queen of England. Initially, it looked like Jane would be saved, however, as rebellions emerged, it was too dangerous to have her alive, and Mary I had her beheaded by an axeman. She was allowed a private execution inside the tower's walls, but after the clean cut of the axe blade, Jane was buried inside the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula. It was said that Jane's body was still lying on the scaffold later that day, and that there was an extraordinary amount of blood which had come from so small a body. But in the night, she was also buried in the chapel near to the remains of her husband, and the two other fallen and executed Tudor queens. Now, during the Victorian era, when Queen Victoria visited the tower, she was appalled at the state of the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula. She was disgusted that a place which held the bones of anointed queens and many of the Tudor period's greatest figures was dilapidated and falling into ruin. It was said that the pavement had sunk and become uneven in many places and with this plans were made to fully restore the chapel. But as the flagstones were lifted and the ground was carefully excavated, 
the bodies buried within the walls of the chapel during the 16th and 17th century were unearthed. It was feared that they had been desecrated, but the remains found beneath the floor of the chapel were collected and enclosed within boxes and were given inscriptions once they were identified. They were then removed to the crypt, but then the body of Anne Boleyn was found. It had been disturbed before, as the remains of another woman had interfered with Anne's coffin, and a local surgeon pronounced that the bones were to be Anne's. It was said that the bones of the head indicated a well-formed round skull with an intellectual forehead, straight orbital ridge, large eyes, oval face, and a rather square full chin. The remains of the vertebra and the bones of the lower limbs indicate a well-formed woman of middle height with a short and slender neck. The ribs show depth and roundness of chest. The hands and feet bones indicate delicate and well-shaped hands and feet, with tapering fingers and a narrow foot. But the discovery of Anne's remains was shocking. Also found were the remains of Margaret Pole, the Countess of Salisbury, but alongside her it's claimed were the decaying remains of Catherine Howard. The full remains of her were not found, and some historians claim that this indicates the truth regarding the quicklime poured onto her body. Nonetheless, the remains of Catherine were gathered. Also, Lady Jane Grey's remains were found close to the high altar as well. Now, after the repair work took place inside of the Tower of London's chapel, the plan was drawn up to inter the remains back under the high altar. Each of the caskets containing the remains were brought into the chapel by the men, and along with the priests, the workmen watched as the boxes were buried, together under the high altar in a large grave that had been laid out. Carefully, a note was made of the positions of each of the burials, and they were interred just four inches below the surface of the ground. In terms of where the three Tudor queens now lie in the grave, Queen Anne Boleyn is buried in position two below the high altar, next to her brother George Boleyn in the first row, two in from the edge. Also, Catherine Howard is buried in position five, next to Lady Rochford Jane Boleyn, who was executed alongside her. She lies three in from the right on the front row, but sitting behind Anne Boleyn on the second row, directly behind her is Lady Jane Grey, the nine-day queen. There are many more who share the high altar as their grave sites include James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth, whose head was hacked off by Jack Ketch, Edward Seymour, the Lord Protector during the reign of King Edward VI, Sir Thomas Overbury, the poet murdered at the Tower, and Lady Jane's husband, Guildford Dudley, who lies next to Jane. Today, grave markers mark specifically where Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard and Lady Jane Grey are buried. A decorative floor tile does this job, and despite all three of the women being Queens of England, they lie today in the same grave and the same place. Every time I visited the Tower of London, the gravesite is a sombre and calm reminder of the brutality that each of the Queens met their deaths with. Today, the Chapel of St Peter ad Vincula and the High Altar marks the graves of the three Tudor Queens of England. Thank you for watching and to support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.